Those of you who intend to apply to MBA programs that require GMAT in 2024, you will need to familiarize yourself with the new GMAT Focus Edition. Hi, I'm Manisha Mishra and I'm the Head of MBA and Grad Counseling at EduSmith Bangkok in Thailand. Today, in this video, we will talk about the new GMAT Focus Edition and we will discuss how it is different from the previous one. And how will we do it? We will go through question by question together. As you know, GMAT has been one of the most accepted tests for business school applications. Schools use your GMAT scores along with a lot of other factors such as your academic background, essays, work experience and recommendations to assess your readiness for the program. GMAT is mainly a test of your analytical and quantitative reasoning skills tested in a timed format. Basically, they want to know how well you think strategically and logically, including your comprehension of quantitative and database topics. This new version of GMAT, the Focus Edition, is a redesigned test by the same test maker, GMAC. It will still test the same skills that are most relevant for success in graduate management programs. GMAT Focus Edition was launched on November 7th. The good news is that the new version of GMAT is significantly shorter. The exam time has been reduced to only 2 hours and 15 minutes, including a 10 minute break from the original 3 hours and 30 minutes. It will no longer have an essay section. So now there are 3 sections. Each of them will be 45 minutes long. The quantitative reasoning section with 21 questions, verbal reasoning 23 questions and data insights 20 questions. Candidates can choose to take any part of the exam anytime they want to. They can choose the uh, alignment, the priority. There will be, as I said, a 10 minute break. You can choose to take it after the first part, maybe after the second part, or you can also choose to not take a break at all. Let's also look at some of the changes in the actual sections themselves. So, for example, in the con section, the number of questions, as I said, has, has reduced. Uh, earlier it was 20, 31, now it's just 21. There will only be problem solving questions and no data sufficiency. You also won't find any specific geometry questions. However, coordinate plane geometry is actually considered algebra. So coordinate plane questions can still appear. The focus will be testing your analytical skills mainly through arithmetic and algebra concepts, however. And as before, the use of calculators is prohibited. Um, the next is the verbal section. This one has now only 23 questions as opposed to 36 questions earlier and sentence correction questions have been dropped. So you will have to answer only reading comprehension and critical reasoning questions. Lastly, there is a new section. This is called data insights. It will have a mix of integrated reasoning and data sufficiency questions to measure your ability to interpret and analyze business data. This section will have a calculator on the screen for you to use and approximately there will be 20 to 40 percent data sufficiency questions, 10 to 20 percent multi-source reasoning questions, 10 to 20 percent table analysis questions, 20 to 30 percent graphical interpretation and lastly 10 to 20 percent of the two-part analysis questions. The GMAT focus score scale is different from the previous version. In this new version, all three sections, the quant, verbal and data insights contribute to your total score on a scale of 205 to 805 in 10 point increments. On the old GMAT exam, only the quant and verbal were factored into the total score, right? Well, you will be analyzing data every day in business school. So GMAT focus studies can be a chance for you to build up solid foundational skills for the program. You will also receive individual section scores for each section. The new scoring scale for each of these sections is from 60 to 90 in one point increments. To interpret your GMAT focus edition scores, you need to first of all focus on the percentile, not the exact score. And uh, GMAT has also provided a concordance table to compare scores from both the versions of the GMAT. So for example, a 655 in focus edition is in concordance with the 710 of the older version and it translates to 90th percentile. Uh, what happens is that this will help the school compare your performance with the other applicants like before. It 
depends on what you value in your test taking experience. I do believe that it does offer some advantages. GMAT focus is still a question adaptive exam like the old GMAT but now you can review your answers as much as you want and change your answers for up to three questions. You will still need to choose an answer to each problem as you go though. Then at the end of the section you will be able to come back, review any problems you want and change up to three answers. You will also have access to bookmark feature throughout so you can quickly find again the problems that you want to review. On that note, when should you change your answer and when should you leave it alone and move on? I would suggest that you can change it if you found a careless mistake in your answer or you remembered a fact or a rule that changed your answer. But if you panicked and you're anxious or you're stuck between two answers that you're not sure about, leave it alone, move on. That's the best you can do for now, right? Uh, what's the next thing that has that in my opinion is advantageous is that you can also select uh, in which order in which order you want to attempt the three questions. The score report is also more detailed. It provides more helpful analysis of your performance, especially if you want to retake the exam. It will be very helpful for your planning and preparation. Lastly, you can also select the schools uh, where you want to send the score report after you receive the score reports. However, this version of the test has been launched very recently, so there are still some glitches. One of the test takers that I have worked with informed me that his break was skipped entirely by the system. However, I assume that these are small issues which will be ironed out soon by GMAC. The short answer is no. It will still test your analytical skills and your ability to perform in a stressful timed environment. Even though the test is shorter and has eliminated certain parts such as geometry in quant and sentence correction in verbal, the questions that remain are at the same level of difficulty as before. In fact, I would argue that as the focus edition will have fewer questions per section, it may lead to a more sensitive algorithm and that can probably make it harder to achieve a higher score. First of all, Please keep in mind that GMAT scores are valid for 5 years. So, if you have already taken the GMAT classic version or you are planning to take it before it is phased out, you can still apply with that score until early 2029. Secondly, most universities have announced that they will accept GMAT focus scores starting from round 2 of their application cycle, which is Probably uh, for some schools it would have already been gone in uh, December, early December of 2023 or for most of the schools it will be in January of 2024. The notable exceptions for round 2 however are Howard and Wharton who will not accept it in this application cycle but they have indicated that they would accept it from next year onwards. You can find all the latest list of universities that will accept the GMAT focus edition on mba.com. No, the number of exams will not be reset. Both old and new GMAT exams are counted together. So if you have taken the previous GMAT version three times and you have scheduled the GMAT focus edition test now, it will be counted as your fourth attempt. Like any test preparation, you should start by assessing your current knowledge and skills. Take an official mock test to understand your relative percentile. This will form the basis of your study plan. Analyze which areas you need to work on the most and make realistic estimates of both the sequence of the study and the time you need. However, always take into account your other commitments when you make the study plan, like your professional work experience, right? The official preparation materials for the GMAT Focus Edition were released in June 2023, including the official GMAT guide of 2023-2024 edition and official practice tests. You should take advantage of the questions in the OG and practice tests in your study plan. Also, uh, remember there is a significant overlap between the two versions of GMAT. So if you were preparing for the old version, your efforts have not gone to waste at all. If you need more intense help, you can always reach out to Edu Smith. We can guide you every step of the way.
earlier, the integrated reasoning section did not play a role in your final score. But data insights is an integral part of the exam. This section reflects the increasing importance of data literacy and analytics in the business world. So, uh, what can you do to prepare for data insights? You can make a two-part strategy. First of all, combine your data sufficiency preparation with the quant section. Even though DS has moved from quant to data insights, it still makes sense to prepare for DS along with quant because the topics are similar. When you review and practice problem solving questions for number properties, do it for DS too. Work on topic by topic and you will have DS prepared and you will even develop more stronger skills for quant. Secondly, start working on the other types of questions for DI after you have made a significant progress in your quant and verbal prep. The rest of data insights questions are similar to integrated reasoning from the previous version. These questions need you to use maths concepts, analysis, reasoning skills. So while you're preparing for quant and verbal, you're actually also preparing for data insights. Lastly, why should you choose EduSmith to help you prepare for GMAT Focus Edition? Well, firstly, we offer exclusive private and small group classes. You will be learning with our expert instructors who have graduated from top universities themselves. You can also learn at your own pace and on your own schedule. All of that to say that we also offer a one hour free counseling session with our strategic advisors who can help you plan not only your GMAT preparation journey, but your entire graduate school application journey. If you want to add us online to book this session, the line code is here. Thank you for joining me today and I hope this video was very helpful for you and it will help you prepare well for your GMAT Focus Edition.